Hello and welcome watch fam, I'm the Chirpy Panda and today we're looking at the Escapement Time Flieger Type B watch that is straight from AliExpress. It's something that's slightly different, I haven't been really buying too much stuff from AliExpress. Uh, but the, here is the box and I'm gonna unbox and give my first impressions coming right up after this intro. For those that don't know or are not familiar with the subject matter, there are a lot of different YouTubers that have covered what a Flieger watch or a pilot watch in German actually means. However, I'll just run over through uh, real quick about at least my understanding. Now, the Flieger watch was designed or made specifically for the German Luftwaffe. Is that how you pronounce it? I apologize. Um, my German is subpar. And uh, largely, it was just used by pilots during flight. So they weren't really supposed to be a fashion statement of by any means or stretch of the imaginations and the main point of a flieger or a pilot watch was number one legibility they usually came back in the day at least when it was made for the pilot it was in a 55 millimeter case which was huge it was supposed to be strong robust and uh, the pilot required this um, instrument as part of the you know arsenal of flight tools and obviously because of that accuracy was extremely extremely important overall the point is that the pilot can quite easily look down and tell the time and be able to quickly find out how far they've flown or are they in, in time to do a certain maneuver or a strategic action whilst they're in the air. The other uh, signature thing is that it came in two types or two different types of faces which they call type A. The more clean, the simpler design with a triangle and two dots at the 12 o'clock mark so that the pilot can quickly and eligibly see even in the dark where 12 was, as well as type B where it was a bit more busy but it will be displaying a, um, more accurately what the time is. So ultimately after the pilot has finished using this, they were to return it back to the squadron or back to I guess the the commanding officer, I suppose. Eh? <laughs> but that's that's kind of it. Um, ultimately the, the type of flieger watches that I have here in front of me um, is, is relatively low budget and the original manufacturers of Flieger watches which included IWC, Alange Song, is that how you pronounce it? Alange Song? Stoa, Laka and Wempe. Uh, they're massive brands but they cost you know thousands of dollars and the ones in front of me are a lot cheaper. But without further ado, let's jump into the unboxing and first impressions. Hello and welcome back guys. So in front of me is the Escapement Time Flieger Pilot Watch. The watch came in this very simple box I must say with a, the Escapement Time logo just stuck onto it so I believe this would obviously to bring the cost down a little bit more because it was a very very cheap watch. Now just popping this open I'm just gonna leave this here just so we know what watch we're talking about and here we have it this is the Escapement Time Pilot Watch or the Flieger Watch that's I bet I think that is all in that's it there's nothing oh hang on that's it wow super simple plat uh, this is kind of like a foamy thing it's that's it that's all you're gonna get from them I guess that is truly to keep the cost as low as possible so in front of us is the type B Flieger watch from escapement time the wrapping is only on the case so I'm gonna just slowly peel it off it's almost like a mummy it's, it's done in a way that's almost mummified if that makes sense this on the side a little bit here let me wipe this up the here we have it it's a little bit more here I'm just gonna remove that blue part what are these sticky things anyway it's so hard to remove there is an opening for me to do it however it's, it's virtually impossible and I think there's something on the case back as well Let's, would you like to hear that unfortunately I couldn't show you and uh, have you listen to that at the same time so here is the watch in all its glory. Basically the the dial face is exactly as the Flieger uh, Type B has intended with the minutes obviously indices on the outside. Now in from what their website says, those hands, you see how it's slightly blue? That is actually heat treated blued hands. So uh, for the price which I think I got it for, uh, $130, uh, you're getting quite a lot. The crown is an onion style crown. You can see that it's beautiful and it feels amazing. It's also a screw down crown 
and hand windable. I believe the movement inside is an NH35 Seiko movement, which means unfortunately there is a ghost date. So for the purists out there, they kind of be really annoyed about this. But keep in mind, this is only $130 Australian, which is less, I'd say 100 US for a magnificent pilot watch and definitely an alternative to Laco or the Stoa pilot watches. Let's talk about the actual specs of this watch. So I've got my trusty, what do you call this, like a caliper? And I'll measure the case diamond now. This time it has been zeroed as you can see. Oh. 42 is the case diameter. With the crown it is 46. Thickness is 12.5. Lug to lug is 50, so a pretty big watch. I mean, it is a pilot watch, just keep that in mind. And the band, I believe, is 20. So they got the 20 lug width. This crystal is a sapphire crystal. It is flat and is flush with the case. It has 30 atoms of water resistance, so I believe that's 300 meters water resistance with a screw down crown. The hands, at least the second hand, actually I think all the hands have been treated blue and has a applied Swiss BGW9 loom. So it's extremely bright under, you know, in the dark and I'll try to do a loom test later on. And then, as I mentioned before, it runs a Seiko NH35 with a ghost date. If you, for those that don't know, this brand, Scatman Time, is actually a one-man band. It's literally one guy running it. The band that it comes with actually doesn't feel... Uh, supposedly it's leather, but it kind of feels plasticky. Does it say genuine leather on the back? I mean, does that even matter? It doesn't. I'm probably going to swap that out with maybe like a parachute... Parachute cool... Uh, parachute strap, sorry. Or a NATO. Just to get that military vibe, because I'm, I'm really hankering for that. My biggest concern about this watch is the 42 millimeter diameter because I've only got six and a uh, quarter inch wrist, so it's it's quite slender. My wrist, slender wrist. <laughs> uh, so you you'll be thinking if I pop this on, I don't know if it will fit. Now, as a quick wristwatch check, I am wearing the Invicta Pro Diver. Is it gonna here? Yeah. So this, my understanding is this is a 40. So if I just chuck it next to it, you can see how the two sizes are different. Just as, I mean, the Invicta, whoever has Submariner, it's the same size, obviously. But I think it's slightly smaller than SKX007. Um, so if you've got an SKX007, you can kind of think maybe a bit big. If you got, by the looks of it, it might not look too good on me, but I'm going to chuck it on later. Now, I've got this new tool here. It's a diamond tester tool. So I'm going to test if this is actually a sapphire crystal. So give me a quick second whilst I turn this on. For well, whoever has something like this, you actually have to wait till the lamp is on ready and then adjust the volume, which is I guess the sonic volume, uh, so that it goes, it doesn't show up on the scale, but it's high enough so that it can actually register what is happening. So once uh, it's heated up, it's warmed up, I am going to test this. Here we go. Okay, so there we've got a reading now. In the yellow, it should be, um, I think supposedly a good sapphire goes up to 7, but just so we have some differentiation, this this is a mineral glass, it shouldn't show anything, it shows nothing, right? So like a flickering zero. Sapphire? Okay, so I'm not sure if I'm doing it right or not. Give me a second, I'm going to grab my SKX, which I know is a sapphire. So I got my Sabo 17 Alpinus and this is SNK 809 but I've actually updated the, the crystal on this to be a domed sapphire crystal so let's test that. So my diamond test is acting weird. Oh I'm not using it properly, that could probably be the case. This is obviously a sapphire crystal. Okay, that, that came out really good. So this is a is either this is a very high quality sapphire. <laughs> you can tell this is obviously a more expensive watch. Let's try this again. There we go. Sapphire crystal reading. Okay, so they weren't lying about the sapphire at the bare minimum. <laughs> now, for those that don't know, there was a, obviously a Type B and a Type A. This is Type B for memory. Flieger style watch. I've also got one that is a Type A coming, which is actually over there, I'm going to review it later. Uh, Eddie Stav slash Steel Dive Flieger Watch. But overall impression so far, it's, it's I really like it. It's simple, 
there isn't heaps happening. The case back, I don't know what plane it is, but it's obviously a plane to obviously signify that this is a pilot watch and it's got some information on what it is. So 300, uh, 300 meters waterproof, escapement time brand there, Flieger automatic watch, uh, stainless steel, it's a sapphire crystal. So it's just basically information about the watch. The other thing I really like is this onion crown. I don't see many onion crowns and I think it's, it is a Flieger type thing. So that gives me the, the, the kind of chills just touching it. It feels so nice. The other thing is that it's got a screw down crown, which is very, very rare for a pilot watch because realistically speaking if a pilot is in the water they're probably dead <laughs> the plane would have crashed they're not supposed to be underwater as you can probably imagine and as a Seiko uh, NH35 everyone you know most people will be familiar with this robust uh, movement um, kind of like a workhorse I love the the winding feel I love you know I just like hand winding my watches and then if I pop it out yeah, that's the ghost date. I can feel it. And this is the hours. So it doesn't really matter with the ghost date for me, but some people might find it really annoying. Let me screw that back in. Boom, screw it back in. Some people may find it a little bit annoying that there is a ghost date. The other problem that I feel this watch has is this, this band really lets it down. It's unlikely this is real leather. I feel it's like pleather and it's really really hard i can feel it so i gotta break it in but what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna change the strap and put it on like it's something completely different uh but without further ado let's chuck it on the wrist to see how it actually looks and i could i'll do a quick you know uh, obviously there'll be b-rolls throughout the whole video but um hopefully this gives you a bit of a better look of how this watch kind of looks on the wrist and here we have it nicely done on my wrist it hangs it overhangs as you can see on my six and a quarter inch wrist so this is a 50 lug to lug I mean, I reckon I, my limit is 48, probably 48. So it overhangs ever so slightly and it does kind of look really big on my wrist. So I am unsure if I will keep this watch for now, but uh, I'll, I'll wear it for a couple of days, a couple of weeks maybe even to do a full review. But this is how it looks on me. Um, or maybe I can rock it, you, know, you never know, right? You never know. The other thing is now that I put the band on, it actually feels substantially more supple than it felt when I was just holding it. Uh, funny enough, actually so uh, maybe looks can be deceiving however that dial is absolutely stunning is absolutely gorgeous i will do some loom shops uh, if i haven't already you know chucked it into the b-roll uh, but this is how it looks with the wrist roll it's 12 point was it 12 mil thick it doesn't feel that thick does it I mean, I mean, it doesn't feel that thin. It, it looks more, way thicker than I kind of imagined. So this is my uh, SNK 809 for comparison. Um, the SNK fits me substantially better. Um, it kind of has a very similar pilot -y Flieger watch type B feel. That's obviously very, very faithful to how it used to look. And this is like a Seiko's rendition of it. Just so you can compare. I forgot to mention that the case is almost completely it's brushed obviously uh, completely brushed so there's zero polish on it from what i can see and the brush is basic i guess it's just a horizontal brushing it's got like downwards brushing here um it's not rough but the brushing around here feels um a little more rough than the you know the finishing here on the side of the case and and kind of like the the, the you can call it bezel I don't, i'm not sure what this, this edge is called the the finishing is not too bad now on, on terms of the painting on the dial i feel like they have actually stacked on a lot of bgw9 loom and I'll, I'll find out soon when i have the loom shop but i can honestly say that that will glow 100 percent actually almost certain that that will definitely glow so on the right here is a escapement time flieger eddie's dive um, type a flieger this is an Invicta Pro Diver and an SKX007 with a modded internal. So let's give it a little bit of juice. From what I can see, the Eddie's Dive Super Luminova is super bright. Obviously, Luma Bright from um, Seiko always does well. Uh, the Invicta is virtually invisible, and the I think BGW9 Loom is kind of falling behind. So let's, let's flip the camera around and have my final thoughts on my kind of unboxing and first impression of this watch. Welcome back guys. So that was my 
first impression and unboxing of the escapement time flieger watch honestly speaking um, overall it is a stunner it is beautiful to look at the dial is simple yet i guess on point is that the best way to put it like it is exactly how it should be is the best way to put it i mean they didn't really go above and beyond with changing the dial in any way as you can see it is exactly how the flieger style military spec should be the onion crown i really really like i think this is a stoa stoa probably has the onion crown correct me if i'm wrong and then the simple yet you know kind of sturdy polished look of the case kind of gives it that really strong military vibe my main gripe with this watch is obviously not really a gripe it's just my own wrist size is too small at 42 millimeters it overhangs slightly and i don't know if i can pull that off it does look like it's a bit oversized it's almost like the watch was built for a bigger person and i'm not that person if that makes sense um the band funny enough um after i put it on Surprisingly, it was a lot more supple, a lot more um, mailable and more comfortable than I initially anticipated. So that's definitely a plus for me. And what I've also noticed is that the actual seconds hand is fully loomed. Now that I did the loom shot, where a lot of a lot of different brands, they just ignore the second hands or maybe just have the counterbalance have a little bit of loom. So this seconds hand is actually fully loomed. And once the loom is on, it comes out blue. When it is in a slightly darker room, the whole watch glows this blue, you know bg bg9w is that what it is bg9w kind of loom and it's it's absolutely stunning having said that the loom is not as good as super luminosis this swiss whatever it's called and it's also not as bright as luma bright but um for what it is is very good for 130 australian or say 100 american or maybe even shy of 100 american it is an absolute bargain with the Seiko NH35. So should you get it? Yes, heck yes. If you got wrist to kind of match, so six and a half, seven inch wrist, go for it. I'm a small dude, so it's a lot harder for me. But otherwise, I guess that's kind of my review, or I should say first impressions of the Skateman Time Flieger Pilot Watch. Now, if you enjoyed that review, please remember to hit that like button, leave a comment, tell me what type of watch I should review next. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I post weekly, once a week, I should say, you know, watch reviews, unboxing. Uh, I'm trying to do my own custom watch, which I failed miserably, as you've probably seen in previous episodes. But I'll get there, I'll get there. So yeah, join the, join the journey, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you can get all my updates. But otherwise, I'm the Chirpy Panda. You guys have been amazing, and I'll catch you in the next one. A peace.